right. It's so gloomy outside, man. Look at that. I want the weather to come back. I want summer here. Anyways, look, look at this. I'm trying to grow facial hair. And uh, I can't. My baby face can't do it. I look like a angry pirate or something. <laughs> All right. Anyways, properties 1950s. Um, 1950 homes, you just want to remember your house comes with old problems. Old homes have old problems. It's just depending on what problems that there is. And then if you're willing to want to tackle those problems or not. Um, this one I know has problems, so I did a quick walkthrough. Let me show you some of the things I found. Let's go check it out. Right there, you can see this moisture is active. On 1950s homes, typically what I normally find on 1950s homes are galvanized water lines and cast iron pipes. Those are your two biggest things that you run into. Um, typically, they've replaced their AC units and done some water heater repairs because they've aged out two times over. I don't normally run into it, but sometimes I do, but normally you're gonna run into galvanized water lines and cast iron pipes. Uh, let me walk you around the exterior of this home and show you some of the things I saw, and then I'll walk to some of the problems I found on the inside. So starting on the exterior of the home right here, you can see uh, we have a, a deflection crack. We, we had some prior repair on the other side of the house, so we know they fixed these issues, but let's talk about why this crack happened here. If you can see at the top right here, we have the main primary condensate drain line of the AC unit and it's been draining down and it's been pulling in this same exact area. Whenever you have an excessive amount of moisture in an area, you're going to cause your foundation to move. Not immediately, but it has to happen over a long period of time. So this water probably poured here for 40 or 50 years straight and eventually caused this structure to move in this area. Okay, same idea on this side of the home. A lot of moisture in, a, in an area caused the structure to move a little bit. If you notice, this house doesn't have any gutters. And uh, right here, the, a lot of water poured in this area. And you can even see the soil is a little low. And so you had a lot of water pouring underneath the property over a long period of time and eventually caused the structure to move again. Moving on to the front side of the property, you can see all this really nice ivy. Ivy does look pretty, you can have it on your property, but one thing you wanna be aware of is that ivy invites termites. This stuff is perfect, it's a perfect environment for them and it's really hard for home inspectors to see them. So if you have ivy on your property, just get it treated and help prevent termites coming to your house. Okay, kinda of like I predicted, uh, they did replace the HVAC system. You have a new furnace in the attic and a new coils. Uh, the the one they put in place, it's an Amana. It's not the best name brand. Don't tell Amana I said that. <laughs> it's, but it's uh, it's kind of like the lower end. So you, these normally last about 10, nine, 10 years. So this should be okay for a while. Just make sure you keep up with that regular service. Okay, uh, continuing on the back side of the property, right here you can see that there is these square patches. These square patches are typically or always related to foundation repair. So this house has had foundation repair and what we always recommend doing is that you get a hold of that warranty papers. It's pretty common practice in Houston, Texas or just Texas in general that all homes have a lifetime warranty where the foundation work was done where it was done so if you it moves in that area again they'll come out for free and repair it the next area is right here you see these little circle drill holes through the slab this means that they've had the house treated we don't know if it's a full house treatment but they have at least treated the back side of the property right here again something else that you're going to ask for for paperwork so if you can see if there's any type of warranty involved if you see if you have a termite treatment okay so we see that there's PVC in the backyard and if we have PVC in the backyard that means that they might have done some work I always like to open up the caps and at least look in uh, you can see that the PVC actually runs right in line with the house and it's repaired underneath the ground and you can see the actual path where they've repaired it and you can see the path through the ground right here and it lines right up with that drain stack so there's a good chance they've done work in the past again we need to ask for paperwork because the inspectors can't see underground if it's been repaired or not 
Okay, head into the attic space area. We're not gonna focus on too much else other than the galvanized water lines. You typically can find galvanized water lines underneath sinks, on the exterior faucets, or behind the toilets. Uh, right here, as we went up into the attic space, uh, we found some problems. Let's go check it out. Okay, crawling up in the attic space, you can kind of see it's a mess, but that's pretty common in a 1950s home. Uh, right here in front of me, you can see two galvanized pipes that have been cut, and so you know they've been doing repairs, but you want to be really careful whenever you see this, because you want to look at where they've added in the repairs, and you can typically find where they're just repairing it as it goes out. They don't do a full house repair, and you can see that this, that's a water leak right there. Okay, moving on to the interior of the property. We always like to use the proteometer on any types of areas that we think that there's elevated moisture. It's a great tool, it is expensive, but if you do try to choose a moisture meter, I recommend this, this thing's a tank. It literally survives through everything. But uh, right here, we have some discoloration on the wood right here. And so we just wanted to make sure it's a non-intrusive test that to see if it's leaking or not. And we had some rain. Uh, not leaking. There you go. Yeah, so you can see right there when it flashes red, there's water behind there and it reads elevated moisture levels. And we just recommend to seal up the windows and get them watertight. All right, last area where we had some discoloration and we wanted to see if the water leak is active or not. And we use the proteometer here and I have to turn it on. You can see right here. Right there, you can see this moisture is active. Active water leak at the, at the door. About to close the video and I forgot to talk about the roof. Uh, this roof is at the end of its life and you can tell just actually just by walking up here. So if you're putting on a property, put an offer on a property, always forget, man, I can't even talk straight today. Don't forget to look at the roof as you're putting an offer. And these clients were already aware, they knew that they were gonna have to either buy a roof or negotiate a roof on part of this contract. Let's go look at this roof real quick. So you can see the shingles are lifting and cupping and you can actually see a fair amount of hail damage on the roof over here. You can see all these little spots and dings. You can see that it's been hailed on a little bit. We also have to document any prior repair on a roof. You also have more lifted shingles. Hey guys, look. The roof is at the end of its life, but the turbines are working. That's more of an inside joke with one of my home inspectors, I guess. Uh, and then you always want to try to pay attention, close, attention closely because when the roof is actually this bad, these holes can actually slip right by you sometimes. All right. There you go, do another scan. Lifted shingles, wavy shingles. Okay, everyone, the roof is pretty much at the end of its life. But, all right, so if you're putting an offer on a property, an older property, remember old properties or old houses come with old problems. And don't be alarmed or be like, hey, I'm surprised you found those things. Your inspector is going to find things on an old property. It's just up to you determine, to determine if you have the tolerance or the capability of fixing these items or want to live with the items. Someone else has already been living with these items for who knows how long. So uh, that's it. That's Chris with Day Action. You have any home inspection questions, please give me a call. And please always like and share the videos. And please, if you like these videos, hit that subscribe button and turn on that little bell. That's the best way so you can catch me on the next one. All right, thanks guys. Bye. And then trying to identify. <laughs> oh, it's one of those days. It is one of those cases.